Here are the 10 reasons why the new DCU will be better than MCU's Phase 5 and Phase 6. While DC has struggled to replicate its comic book properties on screen, its great comic book rival has built a shared universe that's the most successful franchise in Hollywood history. However, the MCU is now 15 years old and has faced issues reinventing and diversifying its ever-growing story. Despite its inspired saga and phases and approaches to storytelling, DC has now a fresh start and a new emphasis that could trample all of MCU's Phase 5 and Phase 6. So let's get into it. Number 1. The Lines of Justice Are Going to Blur A surprise in Gunn's announcement was a movie called The Authority. The Authority was first published back in 1999 under the Wildstorm imprint before it became part of the DC Comics. It's a different take on a typical superhero story, showing a team that's willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. They're like the darker version of the Justice League, paving the way for other edgier superhero tales like The Boys and Invincible. Number 2. Reflecting Diversity Look, the Authority has two prominent members who are analogs for Batman and Superman, and they're a married couple with a rich backstory. And this is huge and a huge step forward from the MCU's limited LGBTQ plus representation. Number three, starting fresh. The DCU has an advantage of starting from scratch with the focus on introducing new characters and stories unlike the MCU that has 31 films in its franchise and can be a little overwhelming. Number four, focusing on double acts. Gunn and Safra know that DC's double acts are a big potential, so they're adapting movies like Batman and Son, which is a father and son dynamic called The Brave and the Bold, which references Batman team ups and other double act adaptations like Booster Gold and, and Blue Beetle and the Green Lanterns, Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. I mean, who doesn't want to see that? The MCU's next two phases have very limited opportunity for double acts. Number five, multiple continuities are allowed. The strength and weaknesses of the MCU lies in its continuity, with Earth 616's connections defining the story. DC has a mixed bag of successes and curated content. The solution is to use the Elseworld imprint, which explore tales of familiar characters out of the continuity being applied to the screen. Multiple continuities are guaranteed in this universe, with at least four Batman appearing in the next few years. Number six, they have James Gunn. It's just that simple. Number seven, a new take on Generations. The MCU did a great job gathering its Avengers in Phase 1, but this has left later phases with limited talent. This has become increasingly noticeable after some departures in the Avengers, Endgame actually. Fans are eager to see the arrival of the Young Avengers, which we've seen glimpses of potential members like Kate Bishop's Hawkeye and Kamala Khan's Miss Marvel, but there's no official word yet. The DCU is taking a different approach by introducing a new Batman who has just found out about his son. Damian Wayne is not just the heir to Batman and Ra's al Ghul's legacy, but he's also one of the greatest Robins and a Teen Titan. Number eight, a universe with fresh connections. Look, the MCU's multiversal saga has taken a predictable approach to the multiverse, gradually revealing its individual characters. After Phase 4 realized the existence of the multiverse to Spider-Man and Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch, Phase 5 will bring Ant-Man and the Wasp to the quantum realm. This has been the formula since Asgard made its first appearance in Phase 1. But the DCU's reboot with Superman Legacy sets a new standard with multiple worlds existing from the start. Young Kal-El's balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing and Supergirl bringing a unique alien experience to this space opera will emphasize that. Number nine, a supernatural touch from the beginning. The MCU may not dive into the supernatural until phase seven, which we'll find out when Blade sets the record straight on vampires at the end of phase five. The dark side of the MCU has been long overdue. The Doctor Strange carrying the weight of this aspect on his own and the characters like Werewolf by Night have only been hinted in at Disney Plus specials. Fans are eagerly waiting for the return of Man-Thing and Ghost Rider. The DCU on the other hand, will jump right in with the supernatural realm right from the start with the origin story of the elemental swamp thing being part of the opening chapter. Number 10, the villain is a mystery. 
Fans are eager to analyze Gunn's promise of a new continuity and the range of projects that come with it. But the question remains, is there a shared villain behind the first chapter? The answer is still unknown, and that's a good thing. There are so many possibilities for the villain. The world's finest could rise from the challenge of the authority. The Flash could bring chaos, or Swamp Thing could spend the entire movie in the green. There will be both gods and monsters to contend with, and the possibilities are endless. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this list of the 10, hey, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. If there are other things that you think will make the DCU better than the MCU, put it in the comments below and let me know. And other than that, thank you guys so much and I'll see you back here. Thank you so much for watching.